Welcome back to Nash Knackers Yard. I'll be Nat, this will be my Knackers Yard. Now before I crack on with the uh, uh, XJ650, I've got to get blue back on the road now. I've had a saga with the um, stators and I'll go into that in a second. But that's, but it's here now. Uh, I want to get it mounted today so that I can let the <coughs> sealant do its thing uh, and then top it up with oil uh, probably tomorrow morning. But it'll all be wrapped in this same upload. So let's get you set up and I'll show you what we got. Right, so we'll start with a bit of spot the difference. You spot which one's old and which one's new. Um, yeah, this I can't remember, this Electro something. Okay, I've got Electrolux in my head, um, but that's not correct. But um, you can see, looking pretty burned out. Um, and then there's my replacement. I had a saga getting it. Uh, saga slash arguments, got one cent didn't arrive I kicked up shit one arrived <laughs> there you go it's a long story long uh, short version of a long story now it's important to make sure that that fits in nicely and snugly and seals it um, which I don't see being too much of an issue uh, I just want to check on the bike that's flat so that's going to need to go flat flat so, I don't know if that actually clips around. It might need a bit more trimming, or actually, it's just soft rubber, so that is going to properly squidge in, which is nice. It does say in the book of knowledge about a bit of sealant in that corner, which is what I'm going to do. Um, sealant wise, I've got my tree bond. Um, for those following my XJ build, that's what I'm using on that. I don't want to kick the tits out of it because one thing I have discovered is that this stuff squeezes out quite a lot. Well, in fact, all sealant does, doesn't it? Let's face it. So you don't want to go nuts. Would be my advice. This is not a how to, this is just following me doing. Um, a bit of rag. I have cleaned up the edges there. get that as settled as I can. Lined up with the holes as I can. Yeah. Which I think is that. as I can. Because this stays stationary, but the uh, uh, the um, magnet's spinning around like a loon underneath now. The important bits is to make sure they get this on flat and squishing that cable so it does not get in the way not get hit by spinning elements so quite sure it's not the greatest of camera angles ever just go by hand to start with so as you can see I'm just trying to make sure I've got that as flat as humanly possible whilst having that in the correct place there or thereabouts which is good. Let's give that a bit of a nip for now rather than tighten it up. Oh. I'm a bit clumsy. It's the end of a long day at work. By long I mean long. Uh, there we go. Nicely lined up. Drop the bolt in. Right, so that's then tightened up, and you can see that it has 
slipped ever so slightly while I was pissing around doing that. So I'm just going to nip it back, try and coax that cable under there properly. Just to give it the best hope. being pinched properly. Right, and there we go. And that will flatten out with the pressure of the bolts. Uh, I'm just going to go for a thin layer around the edge. Give it a bit of a squidge with my finger. Go. I'm going to get that bunged on the bike. Uh, I won't make you watch. I do have my little bolt kit all set up. I have cleaned them up a little bit. Um, now the caution here is to do it without trapping your fingers because it is magnetic and it will try and grip you. So uh, in fact, I spin you around, you can watch me hurt myself. Right, and there we go. Let's see if we can position this thing on. And we'll squeeze that in nicely. Grabbed it already from a mile away. nicely talked so that'll do I'll get rid of any excess I can get to which isn't a lot really do not need a lot seeing I have overdone it in the past in the limited times that I've done it cool now I need just to try and remember how to work all the uh, cabling back through and get it all plugged in. Right, so there we go, I've just pushed it behind the cable in there. Through the gap and there we go, there's a reusable cuff to go through. Reusable, I always have issues undoing them. Second, and then and we're in a straight plug. You can tuck around around there for now. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it up yet. I want to test it first um, because one of the options that it came up with uh, through the forums, etc., was by going from a straight output from the two. I'll just tuck that away, and I want to show you something now. Pillock. Um, so, so obviously you've got the alternating current coming in off those three, going through through the regulator rectifier, which is just behind the back there, conversion to DC and go into the battery to direct current. Now that's the two outputs from it. One of the suggestions is um, to go straight from the two, the positive and the negative on the output end and hook it straight into the battery um, and therefore negate a lot of the loom wiring uh, to get there. Now I don't want to do that unless it needs doing so um, but it's something that I might do uh, if needs must. So that'll do. Uh, what could I do? I could trog around see if I've got any oil actually. If not it'll be tomorrow morning. <laughs> 
Right, and there we go. That's the engine. The engine. That's the oil topped up. Um, a little bit over full, as tends to be the recommendation for these bikes. So it's at the top line. Uh, and this bike hasn't been touched for over two weeks. Twelve fifteen on the battery. All right. Let's see if that's enough to get it started, or I might need to boost it a bit first. I need some clicks for that. Right, so at idle, I'm getting thirteen. Right, now it's giving me a nice constant voltage, but I do wonder if that should be higher. So I am going to just make up some bodge cables and go straight from one to the other and just see what happens. Now this is a temporary measure because I will, if I'm going to do it permanently, for one, do it better. But for two, also need a fuse in that um, uh, in the live. But let me, wait, let me make these up and I'll give them a go. Right, just for shits and giggles then, I've gone straight from the regulator rectifier and straight into the battery. Uh, I don't have a fuse, they're bodge cables. I have done them with proper ends, so they're not just bare wires. I don't want to electrocute myself. But let's go for a bit of a compare, shall we? Compare and contrast. So. Straight idle. Just give it a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. Right, so this is with the Bosch cables. So straight idle, and I'll go about 3,000 revs. So we're on what? 340, 350, 3,000 revs. about 8,000 revs there. Just whip that off. Pull these out that are probably going to break as I do it. No, power is off. Come on, you swines. So that's bodge cables off somewhere reasonably safe. Now you're not touching the frame. Yeah. Some way rubbered, ideally. Uh, oops, that's just flowing straight back out. That's probably going to arc when it touches the frame. Right, so let's try it again. So leave it to idle for a sec. Again. 
thousand. those two footages next to each other and have a look and see whether or not it's worthwhile me just bypassing the bike system so the return back into the battery uh, to see if I've got any um, voltage loss across and I can put the bike away and doing that and annoy the neighbours less from revving a bike. <laughs> okay so it's much later um, uh, and I think my results are pretty inconclusive. Um, now it's better going direct from the regulator rectifier to the battery well it, it would be it's a 2007 bike um, it would make sense to lose some power through the loom um, I did uh, I do remember from the uh, Facebook group site about people saying how much they lose and how many um, how many resistors etc it goes through on the way to the battery so that that would make sense but not enough to make a difference so i'm still a bit confused that's potentially looking at rectify regulator to me I, I i don't really know but the simple fact is that prior to changing the stator it wasn't charging enough to charge itself so it wasn't giving over um, over 12 volts into the battery it is now doing that happily at idle so what it's fixed yay um, but not quite enough that I'm convinced yet but it's certainly rideable etc etc because it is charging on idle more than enough to re replenish the battery from what's being taken out of it uh, I think what I need to do is ride the bastard um, and then just see how it goes um, now I do have Ooh, I put it down somewhere and I probably lost it. Um, arse. I do have the replacement um, for the brake, so that's fine. I'm not entirely sure what that once was attached to, but hey. Um, I do have the brake, so I can sort that, so that's more of a permanent fix. I want to have a look at my um, USB port and my battery monitor, because I am going to be using that more now. Or I'll just replace it if that little bit of rust in there has actually goosed it. Um, we shall see, but that's a, you know, it's a simple, a simple panel off and have a look, or actually you can pretty much get to it from underneath. Um, so I'll have a look at that as well. But it, I think it just now needs riding and riding in, um, just to see whether or not it is generating enough charge to support the battery. From the readings, it is, but I would have liked to have seen it spike more under revs. But maybe you know, as a cheap Chinese stator, maybe that just doesn't happen. Um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, but there's only one way to see, and that's to uh, do a suck it and see, and we'll see how Blue survives with his new uh, stator, um, and see whether or not we actually get anything out of it, because the previous one just wasn't creating enough charge to maintain that battery. So um, yeah, we'll see. Um, that'll do me for this one. Um, I'll pull Blue together probably off camera to be honest um, I want to take him into work next week um, if for no other reason than you know because he broke down there before I've got some kit still there so I need to grab all my kit together and I'll I'll see how indeed if he survives uh, the run um, it seems that my run into work is or on the previous data was just enough to kill the battery uh, so what I might do is um, charge up a battery chuck it in the back uh, just in case and swap out if need be um, I just saw a comment from uh, one of the earlier vids on this about saying how ugly top boxes are yeah they are but they serve a purpose and when it comes down to it Blue's a utilitarian bike um, if he wasn't quite so utilitarian put your hands over your ears mate I would have got something better looking <laughs> cheers all I'll catch you later on Ta -da. Thank you.